Danny watches a lot of television and movies. John does not. Listen in as she tells him about what she's watching and he tries to make sense of it all. Welcome to Watching My Stories with Danny and John. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Danny. <laughs> and I'm John. And welcome to Watching My Stories. Hello. Hello again. Hello again. Hello more. again. And welcome. Hello and welcome. Hello. Okay. Okay. Got caught in a loop. Yep. Loopern. 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 Stuck between looping. And- <laughs> so let's just move on. It's a lot earlier in the day that we normally do this. Yeah, so c- sorry, clear- everybody. Clearly, we're not quite ready for this. Okay, so I have a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about this week, so I'm going to just jump into it. Some things I might get a little bit more into, and other things I might just say, hey, it was good or not. We'll see. Okay. Stick around. (laughs) Thanks for the warning. (laughs) You never know. Yeah, that's true. With this, you just never know. never know. know. Okay, first thing I'm going to talk about is a movie I saw uh, called Ma. Okay. So, obviously, this just came out yesterday, and I had tickets for weeks for Rocket Man to see this weekend instead of ma and about an hour before i was going (laughs) i just started to feel like i wanted to see ma more than rocket man and i don't know why i i do know that i really wanted to support octavia spencer because i love her she's fantastic in everything who doesn't love her right she's american yeah and she's finally you know the lead in a movie An, an underrated treasure yes well yes. i don't know she's got an oscar yeah movie, but, but you never you hear know. about her when people list a list right she should be there she's she she's should. there yeah um so i really wanted to support her having a lead in a role and then i started seeing things going by you know on social media saying see it before someone else spoils it you know and so i started thinking maybe there's a twist in there that is going to be exciting and Mm -hmm. so i ended up canceling my rocket man tickets and i decided to go see ma instead um and i think i made the wrong choice (laughs) (laughs) oh no so here's the thing ma was good i'm giving it three and a half stars it was good okay it was not what I think I probably would come out of the theater feeling after seeing Rocket Man. Um, it was a very Ma was a very typical movie. There was nothing that was a surprise from the trailer. I knew exactly what was happening, and so I kind of kept waiting for that twist, but it never really came. So the movie is basically Octavia Spencer plays this woman named Sue Ann. Um, there's a group of teenagers that we're following around. Um, this girl just moved to town, uh, Juliet Lewis and mom, and she finds these group of friends and they want to go out and get drunk. They're in like some small town and they ask a bunch of adults to buy alcohol for them. And Sue Ann is the last one and she agrees and then ends up, um, after a couple times of this, I think she ends up, inviting them back to her house and putting them in their ba- her basement and saying you can party here as much as you want and starts kind of partying with these kids and then a whole bunch of kids from town start showing up and um and it's weird right i mean why would this grown woman be inviting these high school kids over and and providing them with alcohol and all that sort of stuff and, right but it, you know you start to discover that all of their parents all went to school together and they all went to school with sue ann and you start to have flashbacks of Sue Ann in school and and uh, she was not the popular one and so then you start to figure out yeah she's gonna be the bullied one something happened to her that made her very angry with these people and and so all of that starts to come out um it's uh but like I said there's no real surprise Mm -hmm. um it's a very typical you know movie that we've seen either in comedies or horrors or dramas or whatever you know the bullied kid gets revenge or wants to get revenge on the people who bullied her yeah so I couldn't tell from the previews whether it was Spence drama or a horror movie Um, any can you categorize I think they probably are categorizing it as a horror, but it's not. Yeah, it's more of that suspense. Type more suspense thing. with some right. Okay. And here's the thing that saves the whole movie: it is Octavia Spencer. I mean, she is just, um, she's just so good because she goes in in a in a few frames of the camera being on her. She's got this devious face that'll mm. morph into a hurt 
face that morphs into a smile because someone is wanting the smile from her. You know, she's she's really, this was such a good role for her in that she had to cover up some things when she was talking to some people, but then her true self would come out with other people. And then, you know, and she was, she's really, really, really a crazy woman. And she kills okay. a lot. And she's turns out then she has a daughter. And, you know, there's all these, that was a spoiler, but it was, you know, it was like, <laughs> there's all these levels to this yeah. character that Octavia yeah. Spencer could could pull off so well. Um, so for me, you know, really, that's the reason to watch it ever because it is a familiar story. But mm-hmm. to watch it with her definitely feels like she put her stamp on it. And it's really um, it's really it's it's for her that you're watching for right. sure. Well, yeah, I mean, because you also want to feel empathy towards this person. Right. Because we see what she goes through and what she went through. And there's it's such a that's such a hard thing to do. Someone who's doing horrible things. But then you also want to have empathy because she went through a horrible thing. And then, you know, but obviously she's more on the side of crazy. And, you know, mm-hmm. so it's it's all of that sort of um you know, it's hard to pull that off. And she does. Yeah. Well, uh, I got to be honest from the previews or the trailers, you know, it, it feels like a movie you've seen a bunch of times before, right. except for Octavia Spencer. Right. Exactly. So, so for me, you know, thinking about going to see the movie, the only decision is, you know, how, how much do I want to see Octavia Spencer do something different than we've seen her do? Right. Right. right? And that's the compelling part for me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's great. She's great. So uh, the movie's good. She's great. Um, But I would I would wait till, you know, you can watch it at home. There's I will. no reason to go to a movie yeah. theater. Yeah. Thank you. Um, OK. Next movie is um, Always Be My Maybe. Oh, yeah. This is a new movie on Netflix that came out yesterday. Mm-hmm. We both watched it last night. We did. Um, we were looking forward. Well, I've been looking forward to it for a while, but I played the trailer for you, I think, last week. And so um, this was a movie written by Ali Wong and Randall Park. They wrote it together and they star in it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a romantic comedy. Mm hmm. And yeah, so oh. I'll, I'll just describe it. So the two of them, it's uh, Sasha and Marcus. They knew, have known each other all their lives. They grew, they grew up, up next, together. They grew up next door to each other. Yeah. Best friends all their lives up until they're 18. They end up having sex um, in, in the backseat of his car. And it just doesn't they don't know how to handle it and it doesn't go well. It and ruins they everything. Part, parting ways. Yeah. So after then 16 years later, they end up coming back together just because she moves back to uh, San Francisco where they're from. And a friend of theirs kind of gets them back together and their friendship redevelops at that point. Um, maybe wanting to turn into more and, you know, different things. But it's it's um anyway, I'll let you talk first and then I'll get back. I'll, I'll do my thing. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, I suddenly feel on the spot. Oh, OK. Well, that's OK. So uh, I really liked it. I liked it more than I thought I might. Yeah, um, I, I had I haven't seen anything with Ali Wong in it. Um, I've seen Randall Park in, in several things, but never, you know, I never knew his name. So it's one of those things of, oh, that guy. Right. You know, I like that guy. So um, just for people, just in case you don't know. So Ali Wong is a stand up comedian. She's got a few specials on Netflix. She's also on American Housewife. She's one of um, the friends where they always meet and have breakfast. She's one of the friends. Hysterical. Randall Park, if you watch Fresh Off the Boat, he's the father on there. Um, and then he's been in a million movies with. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a million comedies that people would know. He was uh, most Im- importantly, he was Kim Jong Un in the interview <laughs> with Seth Rogen and yeah. James Franco. Um, so yeah, so you know, look, you you know them. They're funny. Um, so I just wanted to insert yeah, that you know quick. Randall Park even if you don't know him as Randall Park. Right, you, you know him. Right, um, you've seen him in something. He's yes. been in every. Um, and yeah, so it was it was really good. I liked it. It was um, it felt so it was obviously a romantic comedy. It yeah. felt a little bit different to me yeah. in that there were some parts that were it it followed kind of the standard formula, mm-hmm. but. It, f- it just felt different because it kind of felt like at different parts, I was like, you know, cheering for this guy. You're yeah. hoping they get together. But then sometimes he's such a dick that no, it's I, like. I wouldn't say that. Oh, I would. He he was stuck. So. No, no, no. Let's not sugarcoat it. He. um he, he well so what he happens... overreacted in negative ways in, in several situations. Oh, see, I didn't see that. 
But, I, you know, what, before they have sex when they're 18, uh, his mom dies. And his mom was very important to both of them. Um, and that kind of led to this the sex because they were in this mourning period. But it also, uh, it it stumped Mark. Um, it, it basically, he stopped living. Uh, he decided he was going to stay home and be with his dad. He gave up college. And he ends up, you know, 16 years later, he's still living with his dad. And he's working for them in their... Um, HVAC company and he's got this little band that he won't take anywhere and he's just stunted uh all because he lost his mom so I anything that I saw negative of him where he was not supporting her and her career because she's a celebrity chef and she's doing really well uh I just took it as it's because he was stunted and there was you know he wasn't capable of moving out of that situation so when he had to be with her in in formal events or at a um a place where there was fancy food he just couldn't he couldn't allow him you know he didn't know how to react in that so i didn't i didn't personally blame him or say that he's a dick because i know he was just still going through what he was going through. i guess but uh, the the situations i was more referring to were not the the normal awkward situations where you're in public with somebody and you don't know how to act it's the one-on-one conversations where he was like almost mean to it during the one-on-one conversations and it's like you know you're obviously in love with her and she's putting out you know definite vibes but what she also did the same thing you know where she said she was going to new york and said i'm sure there's a bunch of dive bars you can your little band can play there you know and it's like she doesn't realize that she's also sure, tearing him down sure then yeah yeah. So they were both kind of giving little digs at each other. But I think that also comes from just being friends all their lives. They're just used to being yeah. real with each other. Um, I guess. You know. And, and look, I, I'm not saying it, it didn't really detract from it. It just felt a little bit different than a normal than the normal formula for a, a rom com. Gotcha. So it, it didn't. It just stuck out to me. It didn't really bother me. Yeah. I was just kind of like, uh, would a guy really not? But you know, okay, whatever. Um, and in the end. I mean, this movie had a lot of good good feeling. Um, oh, my know. God. I laughed so much. Yeah. It's so funny. And the two of them together, I don't know if they're friends in real they life. They are. Okay. Yeah. So they obviously have a chemistry. Yeah. Not saying a romantic chemistry, yeah. but they obviously know each other pretty well. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, they just had a really good on-screen chemistry. So it was... I liked it. I yeah, really enjoyed it. I left it. a bunch. It it's a good look into that of you know people who do lose their ki- their parents early on and what does that do? How does that restrain their lives? <laughs> um, it also talks about that then taking that and opening up to new things because mm-hmm. that's also a hard thing for a lot of people to do. Um, but also her life and taking a look at you know a lot of people who rise and and get so successful lose sight of what their real intentions were when everything started, Mm -hmm. you know? And so she has to examine herself as well and her relationship with her parents who never were around, which is why she was always with Marcus and his family. Yeah. Um, So there was a lot of that, but it was just, you know, it was a lot of fun. So in the beginning, she's dating Daniel Day Kim, who was not in it enough at all for me. (laughs) I was really looking forward to see Jin in there for a long time. But the the two big stars in it were not in there for long. Yeah. So he so he's her first boyfriend and then she gets another boyfriend and it's Keanu Reeves and he's playing Keanu Reeves. Obviously a very heightened, very opposite of what we know Keanu to be like. Caricature of himself. Yeah. I mean a very mean like I've never heard a mean (laughs) word about him and he's playing this quite douche she douche type person yes yeah so you know it's hi baby sorry yeah. everybody studio dog Rexy's came in she wants wants loves wants to occupy the spot oh. um yeah so yeah the keanu scenes <laughs> are some of the funniest because because it, it's he's so, so out of funny. character it, it's it's so funny yeah and uh and it's wonderful but it also helps again to bring them bring marcus and sasha back together um i also want to talk about the soundtrack because all the songs in it are fantastic and i went and looked it up afterwards to see if there was a soundtrack and there is but they don't include any of the norm the regular recorded songs but marcus in the movie has a band called hello peril and they do three songs and you can purchase the three songs and they're all really good they are pretty good the third one being the best one that runs over the end credits and i don't really want to give away what happens but there's a big deal that happens with keanu 
and then they write a song about it at the end. <laughs> and the song is so funny and it's so good. And so listen through the credits to the whole song because it's fantastic. Does, and I'm going to go buy those. Th- does he do stand up or anything? Randall Park? Yeah. I don't know. Because he, he did. He has some, some of those little little lines, little deliveries that that seem like they'd be right they'd be perfect for a stand-up routine right so uh, if he hasn't done stand-up i'd be a little has, bit but surprised know. but yeah he has some good you know little one-liners improv. in there that are very subtle yeah they're not in your face but you know if you pay attention to the scene he throws out some little one-liners that are just they're, they're really good they're there yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it's a great scene. She's just broken up with Daniel Day Kim, and she's kind of complaining and going on. And maybe she was crying. I don't even remember. She goes on and on. She goes and on, on and on and on. And they're sitting in a in a restaurant, and he just goes, "They're there across the table from her." <laughs> she's <laughs> like, "That's like, it. That's yeah. all you have to say." But like, she well, starts laughing, yeah. and that's kind well. of also what I love about the relationship, where there's a lot of times where the two of them might get strained or something weird happens and they both just laugh together. And yeah. that's where, you know, there's a good underneath. There's a great relationship mm-hmm. underneath because yeah. they really do just kind of laugh and, and, and get it. So anyway, yeah. great. If you love romantic comedies, you will love this. You'll fall in love with these guys with both of them. If you haven't already from other stuff and uh, it's a lot of fun. And I, I'm, I hope to watch it again. It's, it's really, Oh, I'd watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me again. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm all oh choked gosh. up. Um, yeah, really good. I gave it, what did I give it? Four and a half stars. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. I give it three and a half. Not because, wow. I, yeah, I, I I typically, I think I typically overstar things. <laughs> so I, you know, I could go, f- I could be convinced to go to four. I really liked it. Um, I don't think that it's anything special. Uh, it's not something that you're going to like go tell all your friends about. But if it comes up in conversation, you'll talk about it with, you know, high regard. Oh, see, I disagree. I will tell everyone to watch it. Really? Yeah, for sure. Huh. Yeah. How are we together? Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess, opposite attractive, uh, you know. Thank you, Paula. Your MC scat cats. <laughs> <laughs> yep okay so that's um always be my maybe on netflix now Mm -hmm. check it out yep okay uh next movie i watched is on pay-per-view called shazam so this is the dc comics shazam uh with starring zachary levi um so i went into this i had known some peripheral of the story in the comics and and different weird things like there's a connection to captain marvel which is weird and i don't know there's just some weird crossovers or something but um, but I kind of went in not knowing anything except that I love Zachary. <laughs> like that was all I really cared about. Okay. And that I've never really enjoyed a DC Comics movie. This one is on its own. You know, um, it lives in the world. I mean, in this world, Superman and Batman exist. Um, but it's on its own that it's not part of any of those dark movies. This was so much fun. It was so good. It was funny. It was enjoyable. Um, you know, completely opposite of any other DC comics movie. (laughs) Um, and most of that's Zachary Levi, but really a lot of it is, um, that wrote it down. Jack Dylan Grazer, the boy from me, myself and I, the Bobby Moynihan show that we loved the boy, him as a boy. He's, Oh yeah. Like that kid. Yeah. He's so great. So he's the best friend. So the story of Shazam is that, um, there are these like, uh, I want to say he's like a wizard, celestial wizard thing or whatever. And he's dying. Jaiman Hunsu plays him and he's dying and he needs a pure soul to take over his powers so that the seven deadly sins don't get out and basically ruin <laughs> humanity. Um, and this kid, Billy, is chosen um, kind of random, <laughs> a.k.a. A- Billy. A.k.a. Billy. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and he's not a great kid. He's a foster kid. He, we see him that he lost his, he got lost from his mom when he was three years old and he's been searching for his mom all those years, um, while he's been in foster homes and stuff. And, um, anyway, he gets these powers that whenever he says Shazam, he turns into Zachary Levi in the Shazam outfit. 
and he has he can fly he has super strength he's got lightning that shoots from his they call him captain captain sparkle fingers um and and then he can say shazam and he goes back to being billy and so and his brother in the current foster home is this kid that play we like from yeah, yeah. Okay. me myself and i and mm-hmm. so um he kind of he's a huge super superhero fan like in this world like i said he's a fan of superman and batman so he helps billy figure out being shazam and how to know, be a superhero yeah and okay. all that sort of stuff sure um what's what friends are for so then there's this other the villain is um oh strong name is it mark strong the the guy from the guy from Kingsman? yeah yeah mark strong, mark strong. Yeah. he's the villain he has taken the powers of the seven deadly sins and his his mission is to kill shazam um and so so that kind of is the run of the story it turns out to be a very sweet and there's a heart very heartbreaking scene regarding billy and his mom um when he finds her and then this this oh jerry from walking dead you know jerry the lovable jerry no no i don't know him as jerry king ezekiel's jerry which has the axe no move on okay um anyway jerry's in it everyone <laughs> and this foster home he's in has all these adorable kids that uh-huh. um all have these things going on in these these you know and billy's just very hesitant to kind of give himself to any family and stuff so there's also there's very sweet kind of foster story and foster family and all of that behind Good. it um so yeah it turned out to be the action was really fun the zachary levi's so much fun i mean you know like Again, the story of this kid who now can look like this 30 something man and they go into the store to buy beer. You know? <laughs> like that's the first thing they're like, let's go buy beer. And, wow. and they take a sip and it's disgusting. So they go back in and just get all the junk food. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. um, but it's it's that sort of thing. It, it feels it, it's it's a lighter version of, you know, Marvel, even lighter than Marvel comics, which, you know, because there's um, there's a funness that Zachary Levi to me brings to it sure i see that but uh but there's also it's really that it's these kids you know Mm -hmm. and that's what the story is about so i'm looking i hope they're going to do another one because i think the next one could also be really interesting because i really did like these characters okay um yeah so i i really liked it i'm giving it four stars all right yeah i think it's worth watching (laughs) don't turn it down just because it's dc comics i mean really give it a shot and um and it's a lot of fun and a good story behind it. Good story. Okay. Yeah. Well, when it comes out on the movie channels, I'll give it a chance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's it for movies. I'm going to switch over to TV now. Okay. The first being a series on Netflix that came out last weekend called What If? What slash if? Um, this stars Renee Zellweger and mm, Jane yep. Levy and uh, Blake Jenner, who was from Glee. I loved him on that. So I was excited to watch him again. Um, And this was created by the same person who did Revenge, which I did like the beginning of Revenge, the first few seasons of Revenge. Um, And it very much felt like that, like that kind of rich fantasy, sexy, dark, edgy, you know, like all that sort of feel that Revenge had. It had that same. Um, I'm still, you know, I was completely into it really liking it um but then when it ended i was kind of like huh what did i think of that (laughs) you know it was one of those like when it ended i was like what happened you know so we think we're watching one story which is of jane and her husband and renee is this very powerful woman um renee is jane no jane levy oh i'm sorry yeah um and she's this very powerful woman and she offers she says she'll invest in jane who her character's name is lisa she'll invest in her company 20 million dollars if she can have one night alone with her husband so of course you immediately go to the indecent proposal thing Mm -hmm. but then when he returns home the next day his knuckles are all bloody and you know and they're not by contract they're not allowed to talk about what happened and uh and so that kind of causes the first struggle um and you eventually you find out what was going on what did ann want what happened that night uh what what's behind all of it Mm -hmm. um at the same time the other people in the show there's um lisa's brother 
he's in a relationship, his first gay relationship, but they do invite another man into their bed one night. And then this man starts to kind of mingle with them. And you think, what are, what are they doing? You know, but it turns out really well for them at the end. Um, and then there's this other couple <laughs> that she was having an affair. And when, and when she uh, stopped it with like the chief of surgery at her ho- hospital where she was a resident, he goes crazy and he like starts watching them and then he eventually kidnaps her and wants to kill. Like it went really weird. Right. And so all these stories kind of was just like, what am I, what am I doing with all these stories? So when it was over and all these other stories had wrapped up too, I was like, okay, so if I sit back and I just go, well, the title is what if I think the question is, what if you invite another person into your relationship? Right. So the main characters invited this powerful woman, whether it was about sex or not, how much problems did that cause just allowing someone to kind of have a say in what you were doing? Okay. You know, the gay couple invited another man into their relationship. It actually ended up being really good for them and really strengthened their relationship. And they got married at the end and, you know, all that sort of thing. And this other this other couple she went out and she had an affair and that got really bad and really horrible for them so i think that's the main the the main focus of this is what if and what if someone interferes in a in your relationship how how does it i don't know i don't know what what the point is after that you know is it to find out how strong your relationship is or is it to find out the consequences of making a choice to do Mm -hmm. such a thing Mm -hmm. you know i think they intended this to be that to have something to talk about at the end but they made it so soap opery that for me that took away from any sort of message that maybe wanted to be taken it got lost along the way it, it just and then when it wrapped up like I thought it was very different. Like the first, so there's 10 episodes. They're all an hour episode. The first five episodes, I would say I was watching going, this is so different. This feels great. Like I'm watching something original, even though it has the feel of things I've seen, I felt like it was following a different pattern. Mm-hmm. And then it fell right back into the same pattern. Mm-hmm. And I I was a little annoyed with the way it ended because I was like, I've seen this before. I can't believe we just ended the way I've seen a million shows end, yeah. you know? So that kind of frustrated. Um, everyone's really good in it and i think there's probably a lot of people who just really liked it because it is more soap opery but um but for me i i don't know if there's going to be a second season they left it open if there is i'll probably watch it (laughs) you know because i like the people so that helps a lot so that's kind of my take it's called what if it's on netflix Hmm. there okay yeah thanks for that (laughs) i guess okay so the next show it's not really a show i don't know if you heard lonely island put out a new little surprise thing on netflix so this is on netflix it's called the unauthorized bash brothers experience okay (laughs) so i haven't heard about it okay so. so it's 30 minutes it's um it's about um the bash brothers uh canseco and mcguire mark mcguire yeah Yeah. um and they basically did a 30 minute i think there's maybe five songs raps and andy sandberg is is jose canseco and akiva schaefer is (laughs) mark mcguire yeah that's interesting okay and it's just five, these five or six songs of them. Um, it's funny. I'm sure it's a lot more funny to people who know these guys and okay. know baseball and know what they did mm-hmm. because I know very, very little. I mean, I know they were the um, the guys who used steroids and stuff, but that's kind mm-hmm. of all I know. So there's a few, there's a lot of funny remarks about that. Mm-hmm. But I'm certain it's a lot more funny to people who know who know them. Um, so I enjoyed watching it because I love these guys. Uh, I love their talent. I love the way they write songs. It just cracks me sure. up. So I really enjoyed it. There's a good Hannah Simone's in it at one point, Jenny Slate and uh, Sterling K. Brown's in a really funny, funny song. So they have some where there's like they're trying to pick up women and they're trying to take them home. And um, and then there's some about being the Bash Brothers. And there's one there's one part of a song where they in, in a f- matter of a few minutes or not even they use the the names of every baseball team there is like in sentences you know what i mean like just mm-hmm. smartly throwing in there uh oh. the names of the teams which to me was just really brilliant um, okay <laughs> so anyway i just wanted to point it out because i watched it i don't know 
if anyone knows it's out there. But it's funny, and I think baseball fans would probably really find it funny. Um, so that's the unauthorized Bash Brothers experience All right. on Netflix. Okay. It's a really fast watch because it's just song after song after song. They're just there. Okay. So, yeah. I'll, I'll probably check that out. It's I, I'd love to watch it with you because <laughs> I, I don't know about it. Um, so, okay. Next uh, is a special that was on this week that we both watched, Colin Quinn. His oh, yeah. stand up, yep. or uh, it was actually a Broadway show called Red State, Blue State. Uh, CNN played it on Memorial Day. So I'm sure you can find it on demand. I don't know if it's streaming somewhere else. It could be on Hulu or something. I don't know. So was that a recording of his show, or did mm-hmm. he record that for CNN? That was a recording of his show. Okay. That's an interesting studio then. Yeah. Theater. Yeah. Or whatever, wherever he was. As far as I know it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So this was obviously, you know, he's done a lot. He did the history of the world and his, I think he did, then did the United States history. And mm-hmm. um, he's really good at this. It's so funny the way that he puts these shows together. And this one, he basically just talks about our divisiveness right now between red states and blue states Mm -hmm. and how we're basically we've had a two party system for all these years. Um, But it's just it's just good because it's always nice to see people put things in certain perspectives that Mm -hmm. you aren't used to seeing. And he's really great at delivering it. He is. Yeah. I I love Colin Quinn. Yeah, me too. He's he's really good. He's he's very um, I'm not going to say abrasive. But he doesn't pull a lot of punches. He, if he's thinking it, he'll tell you. Yeah. Um, and it comes across very, uh, very matter of fact. Um, but it's everything, pretty much everything he says is spot on and really should make you think. About yeah. How you look at things and how how the person next to you is probably looking at things or right. could very well be looking at things. It's really intelligent. Right. And while he obviously has um, a side that he's on, he this isn't just about bashing red states. This is he literally you know takes on both sides and what's wrong with both sides and how both sides are seeing things and yeah how you know things need to be <laughs> change on both sides so it really isn't one way or the other um while he might voice his opinion of current state but you know it's still he still definitely points out what the left yeah is it's doing not wrong. it's not completely one-sided right exactly yeah. so i would definitely recommend checking it out it's called red state blue state I'm sure it's on demand somewhere. Even CNN might be playing it over and over again. Sure. So, um, yeah, totally worth it. <clears throat> yep. Okay. All right. Uh, next show I'm going to talk about is Good Girls. It season two just ended. Hmm. Um, this is one of those shows I just love so much, and so it's coming back for a third season. If anyone doesn't know, it stars Christina Hendricks, Retta, and why am I forgetting her name? Oh, I'm so, I can't think of her name. The isn't, girl from Parenthood. Isn't it one of the Fishers? Who are Jolie? I don't know. <laughs> I thought her last name was Fish. Uh, Mae Whitman. Oh, yeah. see, yeah, anyway. I was right. Um, so, uh, so, and these these women, they through a series of circumstances, they got themselves involved with local crime boss, and they started laundering money and doing all sorts of things. I mean, they've they've kind of done it all, gotten rid of dead bodies, and and. Uh, trafficked uh money counterfeit money o- across from canada into the u.s and i mean they've done everything <laughs> Try, trying to generate extra cash they inadvertently joined a life of- yes yeah. i mean and it's, it's gone and the thing that i love about the show is that they don't really enjoy doing it well christina Hendricks' character kind of enjoys um but when you think they're out you know like they're finally like we can't do it anymore we're caught up let's just be done you know and then some and so you're watching it going well how are they going to keep doing a show if they get out right but then you're also kind of like but it's ridiculous if they stay in so what what i've loved about the show is how they've managed to keep them in this life of crime in a way that isn't yes it's fantastical but in a way that doesn't feel really fantastical. You know what I mean? Like it, it's always a way where it's like, well, yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. You know, I get that you'd feel like you have to do it now or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the case is. Or They even, make it plausible. Right. Because even at the end of first season or beginning of this one, you know, where Christina Hendricks, you can tell she's just bored with normal life when they got out. And so she kind of gets them back in. But even then you're kind of like, you understand it, you know, like she's bored just being this housewife and, you know, she, and she was really good at, sure you know but this year they really had to fight because the fbi was on them um totally knew what they were doing so again finding ways to get out of things it's just been really fun to watch um and the way this season ended um 
also is very interesting to mm. think of where they're going to go next season. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting. And and the way that certain like that their spouses have found out what they're doing and and all those the 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 some, you know, some families have fallen apart and some have gotten better. And, you know, it's just been very interesting. I've really enjoyed it. There was that there was that movie that I loved called um, Mad Money. Was that the name of it? With Diane Keaton. Yeah. And uh, uh, Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Yeah. Yep. And Katie Holmes. I loved that movie. I thought it was great. I really liked the, you know, and, and it always gives me that feel, this show. Well, I think that that, that movie was probably used for reference for the start <laughs> it, of this show. Yeah, it could have been. Sure. Um, but it's, you know, but it's been a lot kind of darker and a lot deeper. And um, but it's been done just very well. And I've really enjoyed it. So I just want to talk about that. And uh, if you haven't been watching it, I th- they only are doing half season. So I think there's only been like 14 episodes <clears throat> a season. So you have time before the next season starts to go back and watch the first and second. And you started watching. I did. I watched like the first four or five. Yeah. Um, and I, it was okay. It was good um <laughs> i just i don't watch a lot of television yeah and that wasn't to me yeah he didn't want to see. spend his time yeah yeah i yeah. think it is i think women would really enjoy it because it's so it's nice to watch these women take control in a lot of different ways not just in committing crimes it, it allows them to take control in their lives in other ways as well and okay. I, I really like it yeah okay okay uh, next show I want to talk about is Fosse Verdon that just ended this week. Um, there were eight episodes of this and that's it. So this was the telling of Bob Fosse and his life with Gwen Verdon, who were married um, until his death, even though they had been separated for 15 years or something at that point. Um, this, you know, it had the feel and, it, you know, even when they were selling it, it always felt like it was one of those Ryan Murphy <clears throat> anthology shows, you know, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. This was actually executive produced by Lynn manuel Miranda and the director of Hamilton, Tommy Kale. And Tommy actually directed most of these episodes. Um, and, but it was compelling. And I and I I was shocked at myself, even at the first episode, how compelled I was by it. Mm. Um, it and it wouldn't have been what it was without Michelle Williams. I mean, my God, she was so good. Yeah. She was so good. She so Gwen Verdon had a very distinct way of speaking and a distinct voice and she nailed it. And and she and it's covering 20 plus years. And so she even nailed it as Gwen got older after she got surgery and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. She was so good in this and she had to sing a whole bunch. She had to dance and dancing Fosse is not easy. Um, and she had to do that. Look, Sam Rockwell. Rockwell. <laughs> <just> <laughs> blanked yeah he's fantastic and you and i have talked about him he's turned into a really good actor he's wonderful in everything and i don't think turned into i i can go back to confessions of a dangerous mind and even we've talked about galaxy quest he steals a lot of scenes in galaxy quest i've loved him for uh, charlie's angels he's fantastic you know like little things like that Mm -hmm. but i mean he won the oscar so you know now everyone now everybody i didn't i didn't like that so so when i say turned into i i wasn't talking about his talent he's obviously always been very talented he was just not again kind of like not octavia spencer just not acknowledged he as being one of the better person. actors yes right, right. yes so yeah. when i say turned into that's more about his career now he's a lead yeah. yeah i he's very good in this look bob fossey is hard damaged uh sick most of the time um and just psychologically a mess i mm-hmm. mean and and so he's very good in this but for me I think the problem I have is I don't like to watch characters that are just down all the time. And that's what Bob Fosse is. And they, they even point that out, you know, as he was doing the jazz singer, which was um, jazz, all that jazz. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> when he was doing that a hundred years ago, uh, when he was doing all that jazz, which was basically the story of his life, uh, they couldn't figure out the ending. And finally his best friend says, because your character is an arc, arcing you know which is what we always want for movies your character's staying the same he's not realizing he should change and all that stuff and that's exactly bob fossey he never really figured out how to change so to me it's very hard to watch a character that just stays down Mm -hmm. the whole time Mm -hmm. so that's why for me saving this was michelle williams and even the moment at the end spoiler bob fossey dies in case you didn't know (laughs) um when he's dying sam rockwell had a great look on his face it was terrifying 
But what made it very chilling was Gwen Verdon and Michelle Williams portrayal of that that scene got me which I wasn't expecting because of course we know it's coming of course we know they actually kind of build the entire series on his death so even in the very opening of the series says eight minutes until his death and then in the middle we'll be like eight years left you know so it's like they were time we were time jumping the whole series but okay. it was all building up to his death mm-hmm. so we know it's coming obvious um but but man I she was she was so good in the whole episode so maybe it was also leading up to just this emotional moment she was Mm -hmm. amazing and I I I don't know if they were in for the Emmys in September if they made the cutoff uh it's going to be a really tough year anyways but she was amazing and it was a it was truly a very compelling story between these two um putting all these shows on broadway getting the movies made that he was making um how instrumental she was in his creativity and how when she wasn't around uh he didn't do that well um you know their daughter who is another producer on the show um the the way she was parented by these people was not good mm-hmm. you know you can imagine so it was just really good and really um it was for me too because some of these shows and movies are some of my absolute favorites chicago and sweet charity and it cabaret it, it's uh it was fun to go back and feel like i was there when he was doing them because obviously i wasn't alive so um it, it gave me more respect and more love for those shows as well mm-hmm. to see what he was struggling with and what he was doing um so I love it. I'm sure it's FX has it was on FX. It's on demand. I'm sure it'll come to Hulu or Netflix pretty soon. If you missed it, shame on you because it was really good. Only eight episodes. Definitely check it out called Fosse Verdon. So you said they might do a second season? No, they shouldn't. There's okay, I was going to say, if the yeah. whole thing was up to his, leading up to his death, then where yeah. do you go from there? But Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. My no. bad. Um, and the last show I want to talk about was on this week called The Hot Zone on National Geographic. Um, this was uh, six hours of talking about an Ebola outbreak that happened in Reston in 1989. Uh, this was so compelling. Reston. I couldn't believe. Huh? Reston, Virginia. Oh, sorry. We're from there. So I just say rest and assume people know. know. Yeah, rest in Virginia. Um, So this was crazy compelling. I I taped it kind of like, eh, we'll see. Within 10 minutes, hooked and couldn't wait for the next day so that the next two came out it was it was done in a really great way mm-hmm. uh juliana margulies starred in it she was the only down to me which i normally like her she in my opinion was not good in this. really oh uh, no <clears throat> hmm. um but we so we were fighting this outbreak in this research facility that has these monkeys there um that are testing positive that of course then spreads to uh the humans that are working there as well as we are going back to zaire in 1976 when the ebola virus was discovered by the discovery and these are all this is all a true story the real people were actually on during the commercial breaks talking about their things. So the woman that Juliana Margulies plays and her husband, they were both in the army and they were veterinary researchers or whatever it was. Um, so, so we got to see the real people, which was also really interesting. And really the, the, the discovery of it is so horrifying and the trail it was leading, you know, and then of course at the end it talks about the outbreaks that are, that have gone on since then and how many people have still died from this and there's still no cure. And so it's quite scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's it was told in a very great way also it highlights and they could have been making all of this up for some drama there's a lot of there was a lot of incompetence but at the time what they kept talking about was there were no protocols for this because this type of virus had never been found on U- u.s soil sure um so there were no protocols to follow but there was a lot of incompetence along the way and that got really frustrating for me because I felt like this has to be made up. They have to be making this up now because of the drama. But maybe they weren't. Who knows? I'm sure. I'm sure not nearly as much was made up as you wish it was. Right. So there, you know, since since this event in 1989, now there are protocols in place and blah blah blah. Sure. Um. But uh. 
it was really good and i'm sure national i know national geographic has it on demand because i had to go and get one episode from there that didn't tape um so definitely go to national geographic um on demand and check it out it's six hours it's so good it's really so good um i i know my mom my sister we were all watching it and texting and you know it's scary as heck but really really well done good yeah okay so that was called the hot zone yay for nat geo (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah that's one of my channels yes it is yeah um which is why i'm surprised you didn't watch it weird it's one of my channels i don't know that i i, I don't those docu series docudramas whatever they're called i don't know that i i get into i don't get into most of them yeah yeah it's just you know i either know the story and don't need to watch it or you know just don't feel compelled yeah sorry everybody oh, oh sorry. i told you this was early for us sorry for boring you um no you're fine okay so now we're gonna move on to the actor's corner Oh, hot dog. Uh, uh, because Keanu Reeves was highlighted in the movie Always Be My Maybe, we decided to... Um, isn't, it his, isn't it his birthday? No. Oh, why did I think... It- Happy birthday, Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yeah. Mar- well, I get I get Marilyn Monroe and Keanu Reeves confused <laughs> all the time. Um, okay, so Keanu Reeves. This was, this was difficult because I could have just put probably 15 on the I love line and then nothing else because I just... If I've seen it, I love it. So we'll see what happens. Really? Um, okay. Okay. So movies you love for Keanu. All right. So I got it down to four. Oh my god. We need we need to start putting a limit on it. But go ahead. Um. Obviously, Speed. Yeah, um, that's on mine too. I can watch Speed. I could watch it every day and still be n- nervous wreck when yeah, I'm watching it. And here's what occurred to me. I got a little sad when I was thinking about this because you know the 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 chemistry between Keanu Reeves and and Sandra Bullock is is really good i think and then to find out they both had crushes on each other and nothing ever came of it it just made me a little sad well anyway i love speed it it is it is a good movie when i'm sitting on the edge of my seat watching it after a hundred times and i do and that's why and you know jeff daniels everyone in it's so good um but yeah definitely that's on my love because i can watch some great lines came out shoot the host um the matrix yeah the first one Yep. Um, didn't really care for the others, but and I don't think I see, saw all of them actually. But the Matrix, the first one, is really good. Yeah, that's my number one of his <clears throat> of all. Mm-hmm. Um, it I have not seen any others. I've never wanted to see any others, and it and I was happy when they all came out, and people were like, "Oh, it sucked," because I did not want to ruin yeah. what I thought was perfection of that some, first movie. Some movies just should not be built upon or yeah and yeah. sometimes they can you know and i'm sure there are people out there who enjoyed them but for me that that first matrix is a perfect movie it was i love so it different. so much yeah it was just so different it was and so well awesome. done yeah yeah um <laughs> constantine yeah i need i know. love constantine i i'm not sure why um but I just I love that movie. Whenever it's on, I'll, I'll stop and watch it. It's like Shawshank. If it's on one of the if it's on commercial television, I'll just stop and watch it. Commercials and yeah. Um, and then the Lake House. I I love that movie uh, just because of the chemistry that the two of them have. Right. Yeah. I I I have Lake House <laughs> under secretly love. Um, it, I just love the story. It's mm-hmm. such a great you know. It's such a strange one different way of yeah. having a love story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's a different because they, they're to barely do. together. So as far as chemistry goes, they're barely in the same scene until the end. Yeah, it's 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 a interesting way to do kind of. I'm not gonna say time travel, but right, you know, but whatever is. that it, is. Yeah, it exactly. is time travel. It's it's eh, different it's dimensions or universe, something. Yeah, multi universe. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So those are my four. Okay, so mine was Matrix Speed, and then my third is Point. I, it's an absolute classic. I, him, and Patrick Swayze, and it, it's just, uh, yeah. I don't even have words for it. Yeah, it's yeah. just so good. I get it. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, you've heard. Hold on, we'll get to that. Just, let's, just move <laughs> let's just move on. I can't. Let's just move on. Trust me, we'll we'll get to that. Okay, movies you like. Okay, so Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yep that's Um, on my list too it's such a fun ride and it holds up i can still watch it today and it holds up as much Mm -hmm. as it did 30 years ago Mm -hmm. and it it was one of those of the time right like it felt like oh this is just good now but it holds up right 
And I'm so excited for the third one. The second one was not as good, um, but I'm really excited for uh, this third. Yeah, one. it's going to be really interesting to see how this one. How this, <laughs> I'm excited because it's been such a long time in between. That, yeah, you know, it's kind of like if if the well, I it it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I am looking forward to it, but I, with hesitation. Um, so uh, the Devil's Advocate is another one that I that's on my list too. Yeah, okay. love it. That's yeah. I mean, there's so much good with that. Mm -hmm. movie and even though um it's a little over the top sometimes it's still just a good there's drama like gritty drama like you know like it's intense and yeah yeah it's It's, a good one it borders on i i don't know what to call it fantasy or something like that yeah um but it's 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 just really good and the only real over the top things that i can think of are all around al pacino exactly right he does go over the top but no it's it's good but he plays an awesome devil (laughs) yeah um something's gotta give okay uh he doesn't have a huge part in that no but it's instrumental it is instrumental and he's just he's just yeah um and then parenthood so i haven't seen that in a long long time but i remember him being you know yeah one of the big you know best pieces of that yeah so parenthood is my third he played todd with one d yeah todd with one d a martha plimpton's boyfriend and they were living in diane weiss's house and um yeah when i think i first off love the movie so much and if you haven't seen it well you should see it again it's so good um but yeah his because he was this kid that you know normally when he's there and living with the girlfriend you'd think he's an idiot and jerk maybe even but he was the sweet kid you know and then she gets pregnant and the way he there's this moment where he like she kicks him out at one point and he mm-hmm comes back in the speech he gives and yep. the it's so lovely and he's just you know and it's it's kind of almost quintessential Keanu. It's of Keanu just being this, Keanu. I this mean, this wonderful, sweet, yeah. lovely, you know, gesture that he does, and yeah, love it. That's on my list. So it it is stereotypical him. Everything you hear about him being such a nice, warm, sweet right. guy, yeah, is is that's what that scene is. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So mine were all we talked about: Parenthood, Devil's Advocate, Bill and Ted. Uh, movies you hate? Johnny Mnemonic. Never saw. It. I I'm not gonna say I hated it. I just didn't like it. I I didn't. I turned it off. Gotcha. It was so disjointed to me and and either trying way too hard or just was really poorly written. I couldn't decide, but it just didn't hold me at all. And it was a waste of him. Okay. I can. I didn't put anything here. There's a lot I haven't seen like that. Johnny Mnemonic. mnemonic I th- that I assume are bad. Like even Dracula. I never saw Dracula. Mm-hmm. Or you know, there were a lot that he was a big part of that I just never. I just mm-hmm. chose never to see. Sure. Um. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, movies you secretly love. Okay. I'm not sure how this is going to be received. Um. The day the earth stood still. I uh, never saw it. I don't think that's true. I think you and I watched it. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I actually liked the movie. Who um, else is in it? There's a woman and a little boy. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember who who's in it. Okay. Um. But but he was you know the the alien that comes to Earth and. Oh, he was. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Do you know the story at all? No, I wasn't that the radio show. <clears throat> what? A long time ago. Okay, then yeah, no, I don't. You I think thought, of War of the Worlds? No, I thought the day there still was also. This. I don't think so. Huh? Yeah, then no, I don't. This know is a remake. About. There was a movie in the fifties. Okay. Uh, basically, a, a robot. He's kind of an aversion. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. No idea. Yeah. So I, I Glad like, you like it. it so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was not well received. It was not. It didn't. I don't think it did well. I don't think. Okay. I mean, you see it on every once in a while, but I don't think it, many people watch it. Okay. So anyway, that's it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so mine were Lake House, which we talked about, and mm-hmm. Something's Got to Give, which we talked yeah. about. Okay. So. All right. Uh, embarrassed you haven't seen? Two things. Um, John Wick. Yeah. And Point Break. Okay. So Point Break we'll take care of. You'll, <laughs> you'll like it. Okay. Um, mine is also John Wick. Here's the thing, everybody. Um, we're on to the third one. We know they're making a fourth one now. I really want to watch these. Everyone seems to love them. But. But I had heard when the first one came out that the whole point of this was someone kills his dog and he goes and seeks revenge. And I cannot watch something where a dog is killed. So my cousin said, skip the first 30 minutes. Just know that's what happens and now he's gonna go seek revenge and i just haven't gotten to that point now where i can go and try and skip well the 30 minutes so tell everybody what happened this last time you tried a couple days ago it was on tv 
and <clears throat> I was like 25 minutes into it or something, which I should have taken into account commercial breaks and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, let me just start now. And I turn to it and the camera is panning up the smear of blood leading up to his little dog and i was like (laughs) i I mean i couldn't change it fast enough starting to cry i cannot watch dogs get hurt whether they're animated real stuffed i don't care i can't see animals get hurt so um so i hope that the 30 minute mark might do me good and will eventually be able to watch um i know there's a new dog in the third one that halle berry has i'm hoping that that's a a good dog that helps to kill other people versus gets hurt itself <laughs> dog kills somebody. i don't care good about dog. people getting killed good dog just as long as animals aren't She'll so choose a dog over a person every day of the week for sure yeah um so anyway so we're <clears throat> hopefully we will that's also obviously what i'm adding to the watch list is to be able to watch those yeah so adding my watch list are those two yeah uh john wick and point break point break okay so <clears throat> um i also do have some honorable mention um permanent record was an old it was before bill and ted and everything it was a really dark uh movie but i really loved it uh my own private idaho so so Mm -hmm. good a walk in a walk in the clouds really good um yeah feeling minnesota the watcher sweet november uh i had constantine on here um really it was it was fine i don't like to watch it over and over again and now i watch constantine on uh well he had his own show and now he's part of the legends of tomorrow so um you know and he's he's more accurate to the comics so (laughs) i actually can appreciate that constantine he not being canon right okay right um so anyway yeah so that's that um one last little thing about ken reeves yes i was surprised how much he had done before bill and ted so when i looked him up on imdb uh i was huh, yeah i was kind of half expe- half expecting bill and ted to be one of the first couple things he right did. there was like 20 yeah there yeah. was he had like a, a career for like 10 years before that yeah in bad movies or little parts on tv in tv or shows whatever yeah mostly but yeah it was yeah. it was really kind of surprising yeah he's been dude's been around forever he and he looks exactly the same he really does and uh, uh one of my favorite not but you know whenever i think of keanu reeves i think about jay moore's stand-up special where he talks about having to work with keanu reeves and how he just sat across from him and was starstruck he's like what a beautiful man <laughs> and yeah i don't he, remember that oh you don't no yeah yeah and and he really is. He's uh, he's he has, held up really well. He has, and he has not changed. No, he he's, hasn't. I hate yeah, that guy. go watch. Always be my maybe. He will crack you up. It's yes. very funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, Thank you so much for listening again. Uh, we will be back next week. Gosh, we're um, sorry. I think I have tickets we'll, for Dark we'll, Phoenix next we'll try week. Try harder. So. Next. Yeah. Um. All right. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week. Until then, I'll be watching my stories. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye.